personal honor experience. Yeah, for sure. I haven't seen a show like that before. I did not know how to carry my art. Just so much is out of your control sometimes. They will just buy it. They don't want to talk to you. Why the hell did you ask us to come? We could have sent our work. Sharing so much. This is like a masterclass. Welcome back to another episode of the Light Movement Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about how to choose the right art show so you'll sell more art. This is a show where we as artists discuss how you can become successful as an artist without selling your soul to the dark art elitist system. In this episode, I'm joined by Ritika Aurora. She is a professional fine artist from India, and she traveled all the way here just to do this podcast with us and also for Milan Art Experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ritika is one of our mastery mentors, so she's a, a personal mentor for the mastery program, and she also was a contestant on season three of The Outstanding Artist. <laughs> <laughs> Ritika, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Jake. It's just an honor to be here. All right, Ritika. So we're going to talk all about art shows. And I'm so curious, what was your favorite art show that you've ever been a part of? So my favorite show was uh, the one I participated in Dubai. It's called the World Art Dubai. And since I graduated, I've been doing it every year. And it's just uh, been an incredible show. Awesome. What is it about the show that makes you keep going back? It's like a really huge show where you feel that, you know, you're a part of a bigger picture and you belong to the art world. So when I first uh, went to the show or exhibited in the show, it was right after the master mastery program. I was just trying to apply what I've learned and I don't know what made me take that big leap. And I just applied to such a big show. And to my surprise, I got selected. And just before I could realize it, I was there and I felt, oh my God, this is like a really, you know, big thing for me. And I never thought that I'm going to be a professional artist. I mean, when I did the mastery program, I just thought that, I want to hone my skills and I want to get better at my art, not realizing what destiny had uh, in store for me. So that's really awesome. Yeah. So just for context, for people who don't know how big it is, when you say big, could you describe a little bit more about like what so sort of scale we're talking about? It's like a really huge show. It happens in the World Trade Center in Dubai and there are like more than thousands of artists and hundreds of booths and the scale was like really huge for somebody who had not really experienced what the art world looked like. Mm. I wasn't even in a gallery, just out of the mastery program and there I was applying all the principles I'd learned and I got in right away. So it was just an incredible experience being there. I was just, you know, looking at people, I was observing people that how things work in the real, real art world and just sensing it that I really belong there. Though I did not sell anything in the first show, it was just, I think, one print, but uh, it was really incredible feeling to be there. So what sort of thoughts were going through your mind when you first showed up? Like, walk me through it. You you show up and you first walk in the doors. Like, what what's entering your mind? So first thing was then when I just, uh, you know, was packing uh, for the show, I did not know how to carry my art. So I got these huge crates made and my daughters were accompanying me to the show. We were carrying the crates ourselves. Like, you know, we took them in the check-in luggage and carrying the crates to the hotel and then from there walking to the show and then I did not know how to hang the art so I you know I took some help there was this person who had organized the show he was really helpful in uh, making things easy for me so he assigned a person I had to pay a little money to him but he did that for me we had already planned how my wall would look, look like so it was easy that way is that I did not have to decide how, what works go where. So we could, you know, just do it. But then entering there, I doubted myself a lot of times because some people uh, had like, you know, just two works on that three meter wall and some had like 10. So, uh, and the curators were coming and asking them, them to rearrange. But for me, it just so happened that, uh, Whatever was decided with me and the gallery I was working with, it just worked and it went really smoothly. So mm. so that's an example of like a massive art show, right? Yeah. What kind of different art shows are there for artists who might be wondering and, you know, thinking like, okay, like that's an awesome show. That's a little bit outside of my scope, but maybe yeah. could you just explain a little bit about what different types of shows are out there? Yeah, I think there are a lot of uh, shows and you just uh, can see what 
fits uh, fits you i've done uh, a lot of small scale shows as well like you know in lifestyle shows in my town i live in a small city in india and we don't have really gallery shows there so just doing lifestyle shows there and showing uh, my work i've also uh, been working with this organization it's an ngo called soch and they do art fundraisers and they have art evenings uh, once in 3 months or once in 6 months i mean they've just started out so they go to each city and uh, we have like a wine and cheese and art uh, you know like a art evening so i've done that also and that's it is it is like just a 10 or 15 artists from the city who are uh, displaying the work there so it's it's not like very professional but it's like the coming together of the community and then i've done uh, shows called india art festival which is uh, like one of the biggest shows in uh, india which is like very popular specifically for artists who are uh, you know really serious into getting uh, professionally uh, doing it professionally mm-hmm. plus you can find works of uh, renowned artists and it is like a common platform and it happens like Uh, three or four times a year in different cities of india so i've done that as well and that was a very good experience just being into the indian market because when i started as i told you i took the big leap and i started from dubai but then i thought you know i cannot just do one show and be a professional artist so i had to do something locally and maybe this one show abroad would be okay but then yeah i want to do something in india so i've been doing that in uh, delhi and mumbai and now when i go back i have a show in february again so that's yeah. awesome yeah real quick if you're an artist watching this and you want a step by step system for preparing for art shows watch until the end for a free gift so what are some of the benefits aside from just like selling art obviously like that's a huge yeah. benefit that's <laughs> exactly. what everybody wants <laughs> exactly um but what are some other benefits aside from that of doing all these different art shows like maybe you know benefits that you didn't think would necessarily happen initially when i went so i thought that it is just about you know going there and uh, selling work but then because i've been doing it each year now i realize that you know when people see you over and over and over again if they connected the first time or if they need something they know where to go and forming those connections there i formed really good connections for galleries back in india in dubai i was exhibiting there and there was a gallery who was exhibiting next to my stall and now i'm represented by them and uh, you form really get great connections in the art world and with the collectors as well i feel it's not really important that you come back make a lot of profit even if as i started for me it was even if it was break even it was good enough because all i wanted was to establish my name and people uh, knew me as a professional artist so mm. yeah Yeah, it sounds like it's like a long-term investment, yeah, it is. you know, and and obviously it is good to go into it with the mindset that you are going to make money from the show, mm-hmm. but keeping that in mind and like searching for other opportunities besides just the initial sale, yeah. I feel like is such a good outlook to have in order to really make the most of these because, you know, there are a lot of expenses that go yeah. into oh, the shows and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and aside from just the cost of the booth, you know, there's the logistics and, you know, like all of the plane tickets It's the food the yeah you know. everything i mean it's it is like you know whole week you're just spending uh, on your dream i feel and i think i've been way long spending a lot on just the extravagances and making <laughs> myself happy now i better start spending on myself so yeah <laughs> so now i want to cover for the audience a list mm-hmm. of five different key factors mm-hmm. in making a decision about the right art show or not and then have a little bit of your experience about that So the first one I feel like that people should keep in mind when they're thinking about the right art show for them is the target audience and demographics. Yeah. You know, does the target audience of this art show overlap with my own personal target audience for my art because that's like, you know, really important. Do you have any experiences with 
aligning the right target audience of the art show with your own? When it is a gallery show, that is the time when you can really look into what the demographics are or what kind of uh, collectors or uh, the gallery people are targeting or something. But then when it is a huge show like the India Art Festival I do or the World Art uh, Dubai uh, show that I've done. So I think there uh, you cannot really uh, see what they are targeting because they are marketing at a really big scale and there'll be a lot of collectors, there'll be a lot of poets looking for inspiration there'll be a lot of writers looking for inspiration and artists for sure you will see uh, all college students and school students who have art as their dream so or being a professional artist at the, as their dream so they come there for inspiration and then just talking to them and uh, talking to everybody I think is like really important when you get there again about if you talk about the demographics so for a gallery show definitely I think you should really talk to the person who's organizing that to what extent uh, they are uh, marketing or what they are targeting. So I did this gallery show and I just knew that this gallery is good and it is based in the heart of uh, Delhi. So, you know, it should be good. I did not really see who the organizers are. And then it was just a total waste of three days being there. And then, you know, I mean, the show was not up to that level. And just like hobbyists, they were not even professional artists. So yeah, it definitely needs to be really looked into. And then I did one uh, group gallery show and it was really a huge success. I sold a couple of pieces after, not there, but then I got a commission and then I sold two pieces after. Really matter when you uh, do a gallery show, you need to really uh, research. How do you follow up with people? And I know I'm interrupting our list, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you follow Follow up with people after a show. What are you doing to get their contact information so that you can follow up? Initially, uh, when I did, I uh, wanted to keep, uh, you know, a notebook that they could write their email and this thing. But then in Dubai, we were not allowed a table, so I couldn't do that. The second show I went to, I made like a type form on my iPad. But I felt there were very few people who were uh, kind of just leaving their details there. I couldn't get a lot of contacts, but yes, the collectors or the people who bought my art, they, they were supposed to fill this form there. The form had all the details, their address, their phone number, their email. So that is how I got their contacts. But that was like, you know, just... Uh, the people who bought my art, not who connected or maybe, you know, might have been future investors. So yeah, that was one shortcoming in Dubai that I learned, you know, because there are so many artists, people just don't want to be leaving their emails everywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Have you ever considered like giving them some sort of value for leaving their email? Like if, you know, like you give them an assessment or, you know, maybe even a discount off of prints or something like that if they leave yeah. their email? Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. would be a really uh, good idea. But it's just that sometimes when you are in a, a show in your booth, there are so many people you cannot really verbal about it or you know cannot be talking to everybody. And uh, sometimes in these shows, you cannot just write, uh, this is what I'm offering or yeah. you know I mean you don't have a table you literally have a, like a little table and if you haven't taken the complete booth so you know if you there are three artists in the uh, booth and then everybody's fighting for space on the table <laughs> so <laughs> it's just get hard sometimes to keep anything except your visiting card or mm. maybe just like a you know a booklet uh, that talks about you or just a brochure about you and your art yeah that's a really good thing to keep in mind yeah. you know preparing for the type of show that it is, yeah. not necessarily just having like a formula that you use exactly. for all the different shows, but exactly. keeping in mind like, okay, am I allowed to have a table or not? Can I put some signage up? Because the example that I was thinking about, like, okay, you know, you said you created a type form. I was thinking, yeah. you know, one of the things that we did to market the Beauty Reigns art uh -huh. show was, you know, we created a couple different collector quizzes. Uh -huh. One of them was like art decor, like what uh -huh. type of decor would work best in your home okay. or art would work best in your home. And then uh, the other one was, what is your art collector personality? And so like those types of quizzes, I feel like could be really interesting to get contact information yeah. because you're giving them something like of value and of interest. But in the like Dubai art show or, you know, one of the other art shows you were talking about where you don't have a chair mm -hmm. or not a chair, a table. Yeah, I mean, it just <laughs> happens. Work. It just yeah. happens when you are three artists or four artists mm -hmm. in a booth. And if you are alone, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't and you have a table. So this is the first time uh, when I'm doing a show in February I've gonna you know taken a leap and took the complete booth because booths can be expensive but then I wanted to do it that way because otherwise if I have a wall then I really cannot uh, do what I feel like 
because I'm sharing the space and then I cannot keep prints uh, because I really feel that they sell quickly. And if you're working with a gallery, galleries don't want you to do that, mm. especially in India there. I just want uh, to introduce something new and uh, want to do it my way. So now when I go to Mumbai, I will be having a table and two chairs and a complete booth. So yeah, awesome. let's see how it goes. <laughs> so it was the gallery's limitation yeah. like that you, okay. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was the actual show that like didn't allow you. Uh, That's good. In India, it was the gallery's uh, mm -hmm. limitation. And in Dubai, it was the show's limitation that you cannot put anything on the table or the chair to sell stuff. Mm. So you have to have it on the wall. So either you have your originals or you have your prints. So Are you allowed to like take down the art? Like let's say you sell like you, you want to bring prints, right? Uh -huh. Like you bring, you know, 20 prints with you. You have it, you know, 10 of them or 15 of them yeah. in storage and you only put five up on the wall. Can yeah. you like replace the art as you sell it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can do that. Awesome. That's just, you yeah. know. <laughs> but then uh, I think having a red dot there uh, does mm. make a difference. People can see that, you know, you're selling. But then most of the people who come to the Dubai show, they like taking their pieces along. So leaving the wall empty for some time, it just makes a difference that this artist is selling work. So mm. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Where do you think the balance is there? Like between, okay, having that extra inventory on the yeah. wall, right? Like yeah. having enough and then, but also leaving the red dots or leaving that blank space to yeah. cue to collectors. I am selling art. You yeah. know? It is like, you know, you cannot replace it the same day because they don't allow you to carry extra art into the show space. So gotcha. it is back in your hotel. So anyways, if you sell the work, the red dot is there, the space is empty. So it goes for the entire day and people are looking at that. So what I do is the next day I replace that work, but I still uh, leave that uh, label saying mm -hmm. that that work sold and, you know, just line it up there. So it just definitely makes a difference. Uh, the second time that I went to Dubai, it, it was making a difference that people were buying those prints and the originals and uh, it was just you know uh, a lot of soul stickers there and people it made people inquisitive that what is happening here that's awesome so yeah yeah, that's a really great idea. And yeah. actually, one of the times when those rules actually benefit you, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. like it just makes it pretty simple. You yeah. can't change out the art the same day. So yeah. you just wait till the next day. Yeah, right. I love that. Just to, you know, recap the first point, we were mm -hmm. talking about target audience and demographics. And yeah. then, you know, we went into like the benefit yeah, of shows of <laughs> and a lot of different things within that. Yeah. But it's really important to understand the target audience. And actually, before we were recording, mm -hmm. you told me the story of Korea. Yeah. And the nine meter wall. Would you yeah. mind sharing a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, sure. So I did this uh, show in Korea. It was the same organizer who was doing it in Dubai. So I really did not uh, get into the details of how things work there. But yes, I did see that the show was really good. I'd applied a year before and I did not get in. This was the second time I got in and I was really excited. Uh, so really did not look into the nitty gritty of stuff like how a Will I be able to carry my stuff there? And I was all packed. And as the organizer, he reached there. So he told me that, you know, you would have to roll up your work because it seems that you cannot carry big pieces as you are used to doing that in Dubai. And then I was like, oh, it's all packed. So I just, uh, you know, unpacked three of the pieces, rolled them, carried the wood. That was the first time I was ever be going to, you know, restretching it again. But then I did it for the big pieces and I thought it's going to be okay. I mean, I travel to Dubai each year, so I have a little experience. It was okay. We could manage. But then uh, the huge uh, thing that uh, was a setback for me was I did not know how the culture worked there. So I had a nine meter wall with around 12 to 15 pieces on display. And it took us a day to figure out that if you are standing in your booth, these Koreans, Korean people, they did not walk in considering that they're walking into our space and we don't want them to. So I don't know if I'm wrong, but then, you know, the next day, me and the other lady who was uh, representing different artists, we stepped out and we were standing on the opposite side. And in fact, we had our chairs and we just sat on the opposite side of the booth. So people started walking in, they were going in and coming out. But as soon as I, as we went to talk to them, they would just feel that, you know, again, they are interrupting our space. And uh, I don't know, I mean, it felt really weird. They just ran out of, out of the booths. So then the second night is when I spoke to the organizer and he said that, yeah, if they want to buy your work, they will go to the office and they will show the screenshot of the tag and they will just buy it. They don't want to talk to you. And I was like, 
why the hell did you ask us to come we could have said our work <laughs> i mean why did we do so much for nothing i mean we could have shipped our work and we had been just you know carrying the work uh, all the way because uh, we landed in uh, seoul and from seoul we were supposed to go to busan so we took a cab uh, and we went to the station to take a train so they Uh, the train people did not allow us to carry so much of luggage so again we took a cab and we went to the bus stand so the bus guy looked at the stuff and said you need to take a truck for this and we were like please don't do that your bus is like you know literally four people in the bus and you cannot do that to us i mean we've been struggling since the morning and it's almost afternoon and we need to reach uh, busan and we need to set up so somehow we convinced and uh, the language barrier was huge i mean i don't know if people understood and still did not communicate with us in english but uh, it was hard it was really hard so somehow we managed going in the bus taking the stuff and then again you know me and my friend taking separate cabs to the place so it was like a really big ordeal just to reach the show and be going and then i had to i was already dreading that i have to restretch the work and make the frames and then we had to hang the work there ourselves and that was again a first thing but yeah i learned and we were like a couple of uh, indian people there so we all of us helped each other it was okay in the end but then yeah it was just altogether a very different experience in a country that doesn't speak english and uh, doesn't acknowledge english really and even you know we were talking whatever we were with the google translator and it was really hard we were saying something and the translator was translating it something else so it was it was difficult man i can't <laughs> yeah. even imagine oh that's so frustrating too that the yeah. organizer didn't tell you until the second day yeah, that people don't even know himself because it oh, was his didn't? first show yeah oh okay well <laughs> In that yeah. case, you know, it's just unfortunate that you had to learn yeah. your own expense yeah. and, and that he got to learn at your own expense. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But it's a really important lesson and, you know, at least you get to share this with other people yeah, right. so that, you know, they don't have <laughs> they to don't necessarily have to. go through yeah. the same thing. So, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. key takeaway, you know, that just do your research on the not only the show itself, yeah. but the culture especially if you're going exactly. to a foreign place and even i mean for the viewers within the united states or or any country yeah. for that matter you know there's subcultures and yeah, you know definitely. people interact differently in new york versus florida uh, -huh. uh you know people are way different and even miami versus sarasota you know different cities within florida so you know the more research that you can do the Absolutely. more prepared you'll be and the better you're able to connect with people or not connect <laughs> exactly <laughs> in the that show in korea's case so yeah Yeah, and really it was good. weird. You couldn't sit there in the booth and eat. You cannot have your coffee in the booth there in Korea. The guy was intimate, intimating that he doesn't know English. But then when we were talking on the bus, me and my friend, he left the bus. It was riding on the autopilot, and he came back and he said, "You cannot talk in the bus." And I was like, "No, you know English." <laughs> 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 oh so my god. It was crazy. Really interesting stories. Um Korea sounds like a very different kind of culture to yeah. go to. And But it was a really good show. Really yeah. good art and a lot of art was selling like, you know, it was really really good. Huh. The sales were amazing. Did But you sell a lot too or No, I did not. I mean, I think none of the foreign artists did. and people were just supporting their own community their no uh, their own artists and tons of art got sold there wow yeah that's interesting <laughs> yeah so hmm yeah takeaway there is you know participate in your own local art shows yeah. first before you know maybe traveling out and although i will say you know one kind of side benefit i mm -hmm. feel like that probably comes from doing all these shows for you is when you When you do those local shows, having that foreign experience as well Absolutely. probably helps you sell more art locally. Yeah, right? it just adds up to my CV, yeah. and you know, people take me more seriously because I have experience. So yeah, definitely, you know, that makes a lot of difference. And when you apply to bigger shows after that, uh, it's easier for you to get in because you have a precedent of shows that you've been doing and the galleries that have represented you. Or uh, there is a lot that uh, matters. I mean, it really matters that. you've done those big shows there. Okay, so number two mm -hmm. in determining the right show 
for you, if you know, especially in concert in consideration of will I sell art at this show, mm -hmm. is the show's track record, right? Yeah. Like, does this show have a track record of selling a lot of art for artists? Do you have any experience in relation to determining a show's track record or not and like researching the track record before applying to a show? Uh, yeah, I've done that, especially with the India Art Festival that I did. And I've spoken to a lot of Indian artists who've been doing those shows for years. And what I got to know was that they said that they started with these shows and did them for a couple of years. And it's been really good for their sales and they're finding contacts because uh, these uh, that show specifically uh, invites a lot of interior decorators and a lot of art consultants. Plus the collectors themselves are there. So yes, does matter but then I think you just have to talk to artists better than uh, the galleries because mm. galleries would ask you to participate through them that <laughs> that happens talking to artists you get to know the real picture of how things are because I think artists do uh, share and they tell you what works and what not but yeah not always uh, I've experienced that not every artist has been really truthful about uh, things but then yeah most of them I've met I've had a good experience that where they've shared which one which shows were good or which shows were not so it helps me decide uh, that for sure. What's an experience where an artist kind of tried to, did they try to throw you off like that it wasn't a good show or did they oversell the show or were they just not truthful about how much they sold or? Yeah, not truthful about not selling part, but just not sharing enough because, and one of them even said that, you know, it's your journey, you learn it your way. And uh, I mean, you'll just uh, go there, experience and you'll know because I cannot say if your art will sell or not. I said, Definitely, you cannot say that. But then at least, uh, I mean, do people come? Because, you know, that yeah. is that is important. People come, I can I uh, uh, talk to them. And I mean, at least make good conversations and good contacts, if not sales in the first show. So because the first time I participated in this show, uh, it was in Delhi. And then I was just about to make a sale and uh, we were about to pack the stuff. And then this guy says, how long have you been painting uh, professionally? I said, I've been painting all my life, but yeah, following it since four years, five years now. And then this guy said, uh, okay, I'll come back. I said, what happened? I mean, you were just about to ask me to, I mean, you just said that uh, pack. So he's like, uh, I've seen, I mean, very resistant. And then he says, oh, I've seen a lot of COVID born artists. And I don't know if I want to invest in somebody who's just new into this industry. And I was like, oh, okay, another lesson. So, wow. Yeah. So what do you do now if someone asks you how long you've been painting? Uh, I think I would say the same thing yeah. because I wouldn't lie. I've been doing it all my life, but professionally this. And I think I've grown tremendously in these five years and that is who I am. So definitely I wouldn't lie. But uh, that is part of my journey and I would keep showing up and I'm sure people will buy more of my art so yeah. yeah yeah so I've made it a point that you know specifically this show I'm gonna be there all the time and make a name for myself in the country I live first and then abroad I mean I'm gonna do a show abroad each year for sure that's my goal but then I want to do more shows in India mm. yeah because the travel cost is low and then you know it's just uh, more affordable that you can do more shows yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. One thing that I'm hearing a lot from what you're saying is mm. that consistency is just absolutely key. Like you oh, have to yes. be super consistent yeah. and keep showing up. And, you know, if you stick it out, then you will get taken more seriously yeah. and people will buy your art. They'll have even more reasons to buy your art because yeah. they've seen you. You're more familiar to them. Yeah. And when people, you know, people are attracted to familiarity. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So... Yeah, that's a good point. So number two, the show reputation and track record. Make sure that you find a show that has a good track record by talking to other artists. Yeah. And don't always trust the galleries if they're the ones who are going to be selling you the booth. <laughs> <laughs> what type of art is displayed at the art show? Um, I feel like this is a huge 
factor in it that might not be always taken into consideration. So could you just elaborate a little bit on your experience and discerning the right art show based off of the type of art? And maybe what are some of the factors within that? When you're deciding the uh, show based on the type of uh, genre they are looking at or something. So I think that really matters when you're doing a gallery show and a few artists are represented there because then definitely you don't want your work to be, you know, if they are uh, doing abstracts and you are the only portrait artist there. That doesn't make sense because maybe they are just uh, focusing on the collectors who would like to buy abstract. But then when you're doing a big show where there are multiple artists from all over, or maybe all over the country or all over the world. So then you cannot really uh, decide on the genre and you can just be there showing your individuality or who you are as a person and as an artist. So, I mean, I've done that as well. In the beginning, uh, I participated in this uh, gallery show in India and uh, I did not realize that I need to think that. And all the art there was, you know, either religious or uh, spiritual. And I had uh, my girls with wings there and, and whoever was coming and they were like, oh, you have really different art. Are you? I mean, it doesn't look Indian. I said, I mean, I am an India, Indian. Maybe I have a you know, global perspective to life and I don't want to be confined into boxes, but uh, this is what I like to paint and I don't think I really want to change what I paint but that is when where I realized that especially for the gallery shows I need to see what other artists are participating and what they are exhibiting and it's not just that you see your show and you apply to it and you go there because that's now not how it works you really need to research it well and you need to see uh what will work and what will not and how people will perceive you as, a, an, as an artist. So yes, I think I've learned it the hard way all my life. And But I think those are beautiful stories and beautiful experiences. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I always remember when I learned it the hard way. So, <laughs> mm. so genre, it sounds like, can be an mm. important factor in you know, determining whether the art show is right or not for you. What are, yeah. what are maybe some other different things that you would keep in mind in consideration of the type of artwork. There's another thing about the price point as well, I feel is really important. So when you research, you should even research what price points are the other artists selling or what is generally the range of the price point in those shows. Because there can be shows like I've participated in the Dubai show and the price points were like, you know, anywhere around, it starts from $1,000 to maybe goes up to $15,000, but not above that. But there are shows that I've heard of like India Art Fair or uh, uh, World Art Dubai that... Uh, would just have your art if it is above a certain level. I mean, they wouldn't let you in if you are selling your work at $5,000. You are a nobody there if you are doing that. Wow. And you cannot be into the show and you have to have like, certain years of experience to be in the show and you have to have certain degrees uh, in the art uh, to be there. So it's just a lot of research that should go in, uh, I say, and you should look at the price points. That is a really big thing that uh, goes for selecting a show too. Yeah, definitely. Do you feel like mediums are, is important or not? Uh, not really. Yeah. I mean, doing those international shows and the shows in India as well, I've seen people are using all kinds of mediums, even uh, people who are doing, uh, you know, pour, uh, pouring acrylic pours, <laughs> they are coming to the shows and they are taking complete booths and they are selling so well. So it's not really that you can just uh, be about drawing anything and uh, drawing and painting anything and just finding your market by experimenting what works for you and what doesn't. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Now, the fourth one is the location and the mm -hmm. cost. So obviously in real estate, there's this, a term which is location, location, location. Yeah. And that's just in reference to, you know, what do you look for in buying a property? And I feel like with the art shows too, it's especially important too, because the location can be a huge determining factor as to whether people show up or not, whether people yeah. are able to park or not yeah, uh, at absolutely. this art show and, you know, how convenient is it for people to get there and is it a place of good reputation? So do you have any experience with the location of art shows and uh, how that's been a factor? Yes, definitely. I mean, this show that I do each year, World Art Dubai, so normally it's like a really uh, good show and really huge but then uh, the last time that I did this show, there was Expo 2020 happening in Dubai and it was the last weekend there. And then there was a Ferrari show going on 
in the World Trade Center. So a lot of things coincided. I mean, we did not have a lot of visitors that year. And whoever was coming as well, they were calling sometimes like some old collectors uh, called me saying that, ah, we wanted to come in, but then we came here and we couldn't park because the parking was full. And believe me, World Trade Center has a huge parking. But it was just because all the halls of the World Trade Center had some exhibit or the other. The parkings were full. People couldn't uh, really, you know, come in or access it. So it is a huge factor. But then sometimes I feel you cannot predetermine what is happening or not because you book those shows like six months in advance or eight months in advance. It was this one time that uh, I thought that, you know, why did I even come? Because there were hardly any people. You, they, I couldn't talk to people uh, that much, even if it was artists or uh, you know, even people, they were not the collectors, but still you need somebody to talk to. It was just, you know, whoever was exhibiting is what we were talking to. And we just got really sick and tired. And we were like, oh, why did we come? And it was not a good experience for sure. So counterintuitive almost, yeah. you think, because there's so many other events going on yeah. that it would have been incredibly successful and a oh, lot yes, of people would I be there. I thought that too because, you know, for uh, that Expo 2020, people were flying from all over the world to come and see that and it was the last weekend so all the local people were also going who had missed it throughout the year. So, yeah, it definitely, you know, was the other way around though that uh, the real art collectors were not able to get where there should have been and they were just being all around to different events and then and that time uh, there was another big event that was happening that was an art show by the king of Dubai or whoever the you know the head of the thing is his wife had an art show hmm. so all the dignitaries all the you know the officer class or all the uh, white collar people were supposed to go there and hmm. be there and uh, oblige her and so, you know, there's so many things happening. That's and, tough. Yeah. And local people coming from there. You know what? This show is happening too. You know what? This show is happening too. <laughs> and that is what we were talking the entire four days. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Wow. Just so much is out of your control sometimes, yeah. you know, in yeah. regards to these shows. Like you can do all your research. You can, you know, make sure that the they have the right target audience. It's big. It's a nice location. Yeah. All these things. But then when it comes down to it, sometimes it's the timing. Yeah, right? it's the and, timing. Right? And what other events are going on at the same time. And really a lot of times too, when you have those other events, it's beneficial. So yeah. I'm curious if the location of the art exhibition that you were a part of was like a bad location in the World Trade Center. Like where, no. was it harder to get to? No, or? no, it was hmm. just right at the gate and the first oh. two holes were it and the Ferrari show was after our this thing. But then I don't know what went wrong mm. that year, but otherwise it's been always a very successful, uh, you know, show. But then you don't know when things can go bad, even in the best of circumstances. So, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I feel like the location of the actual event is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then also I feel like the location of your booth yeah, is absolutely. very important yeah, as well. So do you have any tips on choosing the best booth placement within art shows? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, somewhere around the middle, uh, you don't want to be right in the beginning because when people are walking in, uh, they just, they are talking to somebody, they are accompanying and they just would walk by thinking that, you know, they would come here on the way back. Mm. And even towards the end, it is like, you know, hard for people if it is a, like a really huge show to reach the end. So somewhere in the middle is a really good spot. And over uh, years that I've experienced, uh, if I'm taking just a wall so it's always better when I'm taking the center wall of the show and not the side ones because anybody who passes through they do look at the center wall instead of the side walls and uh, once I even took the wall on the outside uh, which was a passage so I realized that in the passage people just walk by they don't really stop and look at the art which I thought would be the other way around but most of the times when I'm, I've had the wall in the middle, I think it's been really successful for me and I've sold a lot of work and it's just people interact more. They want to stand and they want to look at the work and, you know, have that conversation with the work that is needed. Mm. Yeah. Man, Ritika, I feel like you're sharing so much. <laughs> this is like a masterclass. <laughs> this is so good. I hope yeah. 
people who are watching are taking notes because this is really <laughs> good stuff. I'm learning. This is fantastic. Yeah, that's so interesting because you would think that you would want to be on like a more high visibility yeah, area, yeah. but it totally makes sense. And even in just our experience with the Beauty Range show, you know, just in Miami this year, I noticed that when we were talking to collectors in the beginning, they mm -hmm. would say, oh, I want to go and I want to look around at yeah. the rest of the art first yeah. before making a decision. Exactly. And, you know, it's like, even if they loved a painting, yeah. just like there is a benefit to being in the beginning if it's a smaller space, I think, mm -hmm. because it's the first thing that they see. And if it's a small venue, then, you know, you're going to have more eyeballs there and it's not as much area to walk around maybe. But especially with a big venue, yeah. like World Trade Center, I can definitely see why being in the middle would be yeah. highly beneficial. Yeah, and then usually in the middle, uh, there are a few areas that, you know, that are dedicated to some activities that keep happening. And I feel it is really important that you be a part of the part of those. Mm. Sometimes they are, uh, you know, the curators select you to be there or sometimes you can just do it yourself. So last time when I was there, I wanted to be a part of it. So I went, went to the curators, got them to my booth to see my work, to select me because there are hundreds of artists and maybe you know they overlook uh, look me so it was the second day I went there and I told them then I was selected to walk the ramp with my work and my name was announced so after that you know, people came into my booth. So it just uh, does make a difference uh, being a part of whatever is happening in the show. Maybe, you know, you have a workshop or something or just so that, you know, there is something around you that is happening and you are a part of something. So people notice you. That is also really important. And I feel... Uh, when you are making sales, then also asking for a sale is important because in a big show, people can have so many options and making them decide at that moment is important too. Yeah. And I know that's kind of outside of the scope of yeah. this a little bit, but I'm curious because it's, you know, how to pick the right art show to yeah. sell more art. Yeah. So in that sell more art section, in regards to what you just said of you know, asking for the sale, do you have any like favorite asks that you just have like in your back pocket? like top three or something, you know, someone's interested in buying your painting, how do you like to ask them? Could really uh, figure out after the uh, Milan art experience that this is what mm. I've been doing and now I could put a finger on it that, you know, this is what I did in the past. So like you talked about uh, knowing your uh, collector avatar or this thing. So I've noticed that whenever a woman walks in alone or a man walks in alone to buy my work, you know, they walk away with it, they take it. And when it is a couple, it happens that, you know, when they give the decision on the other one or they both of them are deciding, then it gets harder for me. And uh, it happened once in Dubai that there was a couple who walked in and uh, we were three artists in the booth. So this guy, he really loved my painting uh, where a woman was dancing, like that was an Indian form of dance. And it was just not depicting that. But yeah, it was Kathak dance, which I was to, used to do uh, when I was uh, young. So he started talking to me and the, the woman started talking to the other girl who was uh, exhibiting her work so now they wanted to buy one painting but then both of them liked you know something different mm, that's so tough. yeah and then uh, just because the other girl's painting was smaller and you know for less price they just took it then there and then but I saw that that, that man was just you know hovering around my stall and he was really really connected to the work and then you know I the third time he came, I just walked in. I said, what, what is making you take so much of time to decide? Because I see that you are really connected and I would love to know how you feel connected to it because maybe his wife was there and he wasn't talking. So this time he was alone. And then he told that, you know, I always wanted to pursue dance as a career. And it was not this dance form, but generally, you know, dance as a career and his father wanted something else for him. And then he just started sharing. And then when we spoke... And shared our stories that, you know, how I always wanted to be an artist and it was painting or dancing that I always loved. But then painting was a bigger passion for me. And then I got married and, you know, uh, just shared my story that I've started painting after so many years. And then he got really inspired that, you know, if you can, maybe I can too. And having this painting around can just uh, inspire me to at least follow my passion. He called his wife and he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy this. <laughs> And 
it was it was so cool that you know i mean we connected that way i just find this uh, personal uh, connections so powerful and then when you talk to collectors it just gives you so much of worth that you are able to ev- evoke such emotions in people so yeah <laughs> that's so awesome yeah. yeah just finding that connection yeah. and, and just asking Absolutely. them like what's stopping you from doing yeah. this you know yeah. just like point blank yeah. i feel like is such a good way just being direct like that yeah I, that was the first time i went direct but then you know there was things that i was remembering uh, maybe uh, from the mastery program textbook mm-hmm. that uh, okay i need to do this i need to try that mm-hmm. so <laughs> i do that all the time <laughs> yeah well it's tough too i mean cuz it's like one thing reading about it right yeah. or watching it yeah. learning it but then another thing putting it into practice and that's the exactly. biggest component to actually growing is to take the things that you learn yeah. and actually put it into practice, yeah. you know, and you did that. You're doing that. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing that consistently. And uh, it's just uh, the more I do it, the better I get at because I was like a really shy person. You've seen me come a long way. I mean, mm-hmm. you've been there with me throughout my journey. Now to talk to people, it's not as hard as it used to be. So yeah, I think I'm getting better at doing these things and just talking to people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah here we are. I mean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to think yeah. the Ritika that I met, when was it? Back in 2019. Yeah. Uh, in, in Greece. Greece. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> now you've been on a reality show. You've <laughs> exactly. been, you know, all over the world in art shows. And... Taken some really big leaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's really amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. Back to the five, because we're on oh, number yes. four <laughs> and on to the last one, which I feel like mm-hmm. is probably one of the most important. They're all very important, obviously. Mm-hmm. But this one can make the difference between art collectors showing up and not showing up. And that's the marketing and promotion of the event. Mm -hmm. So what sort of things do you look for in an art show, Mm -hmm. like marketing activities that they're doing that make you want to be a part of that show? Now I've stopped taking those uh, really, uh, you know, Uh, impulsive decisions on I see an art show when I just apply to it so I follow them uh, for a bit on Instagram and see what they are doing and uh, again talk to a lot of people about who have participated uh, in those shows and just getting to know what they are doing because sometimes uh, these uh, people who are organizing these shows they don't really want to talk about how they're going to market because if you ask them a lot of questions then they get agitated or something it's happened to me and I've fought with uh, one of them already paid for the show so I had to be participating but I didn't want to go be there uh, after the way that guy spoke to me but then just talking to them in a way that you know what you're doing or just observing them over a period of time now because you know it's been a while uh, since I've been doing all this so I think it just gets better as time goes by and you know uh, which uh, people to trust and I think following your gut is also like really important Mm -hmm. but shouldn't be really impulsive about it that the first opportunity you get, you grab it. Yeah, I think it's really important to look at like, where do they spend the majority of their effort? Like, are they more so marketing to artists or are they more so marketing to people to attend the show, right? Because if they're marketing, if they're spending all their time marketing to artists, Mm -hmm. then that tells me that they need to convince artists to show up. Whereas if they're spending more time just marketing the show in general to people like attendees, Mm -hmm. art collectors, potential art collectors, then that tells me that they don't need to market to the artist because they know that the show is successful. The yeah, artists right. who are going to find the show, uh, I mean, obviously there's, you know, different ways to list shows and mm-hmm. to market your art show, right? Uh, but if they're spending that effort marketing to the collectors, then typically it's going to be a better show for everyone, right? Yeah, right. But then what do you think would be, you know, some good questions to ask the people that how you are marketing the show in a way that they don't get offended? Because I really need to learn that. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, you know, as a marketing director, I would ask them, you know, what is your marketing strategy? And if they don't have a marketing strategy, then right away, that's kind of a yellow flag. You gotta, Mm because if they, if they don't have a marketing strategy, like, then chances are their marketing won't be that effective. And other questions that I would ask them, you know, I would try to level with them too, because really they should be trying to attract serious artists, you know? And a serious artist, I feel like, is willing to ask those hard questions. And especially depending on how much you're paying for the booth too. Like if you're paying, you know, $500 for a local um, tent show, that would be kind of expensive actually, but Uh uh, for like a local tent show. But 
if you're you know paying less than thousand dollars, you can't expect the same level of marketing that you know paying ten thousand or fifteen thousand yeah. dollars for a booth or a wall would merit because. Yeah. They don't have the budget then in that case. Another thing to keep in mind too, and actually Rita pointed this out to me, you know, Rita Vicari, for yeah, yeah. the people who are watching, mm -hmm. um, she's another one of our mastery mentors. She pointed out that she's noticed a lot of shows where they charge a ticket mm -hmm. fee, even if it's for drinks or something like that, when, mm -hmm. when there's some sort of buy-in yeah. from the people who are attending, then that can be really beneficial because it shows yeah. more serious artists right. um, or more serious collectors. I mean, in addition, you know, if they're doing paid advertising events mm -hmm. um, and honestly looking at their website, like the website yeah. tells a lot and not the website for artists to apply, right? Yeah. But the website that's, you know, showcasing the event and for the public. And what does that look like? Is it professional? Is there a clear call to action? Is there, you know, an easy way for people to find the details? I just thought of this now in mm -hmm. a great way, like a really transparent way. There's a plugin uh -huh. that you can get on your Google Chrome browser or I'm sure any other browser. Uh -huh. And it shows you the website analytics for any website that you're on. Pretty oh, crazy. Really? Yeah, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's powerful, but it's called Similar Web and it's totally free. The plugin uh -huh. is. If you want to get more advanced data from it, then they charge you, right? Yeah, Which yeah. they should because it's, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. But you can go on any website and you uh -huh. can see how many people have been visiting that in the last month uh -huh, in that specific okay. page. Or actually, uh -huh. I think you can see for the total website, right? But then I think if you want to see the specific pages when you have to pay for it. And then there's other tools as well, like Keywords Everywhere that you can see and you have to pay like $2 or something like that. It's uh -huh. so inexpensive uh -huh. um, to see how many people are Googling a term. So you uh -huh. can see how many people are Googling this art show, oh, right? Okay. And then that's yeah. like a great indicator of how popular is the show. Yeah. How right. many people are visiting the landing page, right? And then that just tells you right off the bat, okay, a lot of people are interested in this. Yeah. And you know, you can just see from an online perspective. It doesn't tell you the full picture, but it's a piece of the picture. And I think that's yeah, an important I mean, piece. That is important so. because you need to research a lot of things and it's just not one thing. So one thing uh, more that I've started doing is that, you know, what shows I have on the agenda that I'm going to do it next year. So I've started visiting those shows and spending like, the whole day there listening to conversations and uh, you know just how sales are happening and maybe you know just uh, just trying to be a collector to buy a buy a piece of work that how a gallerist or an artist is trying to sell their work to me mm. so I think that is really helping me and it gave me a lot of confidence and uh in just you know because uh, there was this really big gallery and I went in it was some master's work I just really connected to the work so I was looking at it and then that guy approached me thinking that you know I might be a collector or something and it was like ah okay so this is my cue to <laughs> you know see how he sells his work to know how the experts are working into the thing it was good and then uh, just being there the entire day because my, the gallery I work with they were participating so you know I could be there hanging around and uh, just observing things it just really really helped me on how things work and now that show is uh, I definitely want to do it next year because the collectors were like really really huge it was not like a social event but it was like uh, real people who wanted to invest in art who wanted to buy art for their homes and uh, it seemed like a real fit for me uh, that show so it is on my list for the next year. And it was like, like a very different show. It is called The Artics. And uh, these curators, they had uh, taken the taken like a one floor on the Taj, uh, in the Taj hotels. And it was like, uh, it is a five-star hotel there. Hmm. So each room was converted into a gallery. Wow. And, uh, you know, I mean, there were like around 25 or 30 of those. And really exclusive galleries and they were really really well done and the people who visited there were like really high profile and uh, it was it was an awesome show and uh, one of a kind for sure I haven't seen a show like that before wow so yeah that's awesome yeah and I, I love the what you were saying at the beginning of that of being that collector yourself and yeah and trying to understand their perspective. And uh, being there, I did buy a painting uh, that I connected to the moment I walked in. And wow. uh, I just couldn't, you know, leave that place without buying that piece of work. But then, yeah, it really felt good that, you know, somebody else's work can do that. And I love collecting art, but uh, that was my first time that I was buying it in uh, person. 
Otherwise, it's just been online. You connect to something and you're buying it. But then buying that piece of art in person was uh, definitely a very good experience for me. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah super powerful yeah. buying art and just understanding what it's like yeah. to be like on that other side. Yeah, right. It's absolutely, absolutely incredible. Well, this has been a huge pleasure, Ritika. So just to summarize for the audience, the five different key factors in deciding on whether an art show will help you sell more art or not are the target audience, um, and the demographics of the people who are attending the show, who are they trying to attract? The show reputation and track record. So reach out to yeah. other artists and get their opinions and feedback on the art shows before you apply. The type of art displayed and specifically the genre of art and the pricing of the art. And then of course, this depends on the size of the show as well. And then the location of the show is number four. And um, not only the show itself, but the yeah. booth and where you have the booth. And Ritika gave really amazing advice on, you know, if it's a larger show, then you want to definitely be more towards the center and not only the center of the show, but a center wall as well. Yeah. Um, very important, very amazing takeaway there. And then, of course, the last and probably most important is the marketing and promotion that the event is doing for the show to attract collectors to it. So all of these five different factors will help you in picking the right shows and shows that will help you sell more art. And, um, you know, I think just one of the really important takeaways too, as we said before, is being consistent, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, consistency is the key to anything. You would have your highs, you would have your lows, but then don't let the lows stop you. Just keep going. I think in any field uh, that that would be it, that consistency is the key. You keep going and persevering towards your goals. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So Ritika, where can people find you? Where would someone go if they wanted to learn more about your art or connect so, with you better? Yeah, so Art Social for sure. <laughs> and then uh, Instagram or Facebook. My tag is like Ritika Aurora Fine Art. And you can find me on Instagram and my website. If you want to see my art is RitikaAuroraFineArt.com. And uh, on Art Social, again, I am as Ritika Aurora You'll find me tagged as a mentor there. And I'm so happy to be working uh, and be a part of the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're so happy to have you yeah. as one of our Thank master you, mentors. And we're going to post the links in the description for Ritika um, and all of her different channels and her website as well. Go to her website for sure if you want to look at her art. And if you're interested in collecting some art and you want to experience that yourself, the joy of unwrapping a painting, uh, an original painting in your own home and hanging on the wall. It's really incredible. Thank you so much for watching. Check out this video.